Hello everyone, my name is Alia. I am a first year pharmacy student and today me, Jeanette, Abdullah and Emma, who are also first year pharmacy students, will be presenting to you treatment regimen of Parkinson's disease. So what is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a type of a nervous system disease that affects movements. It is progressive, meaning that it gets worse over the years. It is caused by the loss of dopamine cells in the brain, and dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays an important role in reward and movement regulation in the brain. It is mainly produced by the substantia nigra neurons in the brain. However, in Parkinson's disease patients, the substantia nigra neurons are affected and you have less dopamine. There is no test for Parkinson's disease, so patients usually visit multiple doctors before they get diagnosed, and sometimes it takes, year, it takes years for them to receive a diagnosis. There is unfortunately no cure for Parkinson's disease right now, so once you are diagnosed with it, you will have it for life, and the only thing you can do is to manage the symptoms. Some epidemiology about Parkinson's disease. Today, about 1 million people in the U.S. and 5 million people worldwide are living with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease affects 1 in 100 people over the age of 60. And people usually develop Parkinson's disease later in life. The mean age is 65. However, some patients develop it early when they're young. Men have a greater risk of acquiring Parkinson's disease than both women and older people. And the cause of Parkinson's disease is unknown, but genetics and environmental factors may play a role. For example, if you have a family history with Parkinson's disease, then you have a higher chance of having Parkinson's disease. Lastly, um, life expectancy of Parkinson's disease patients varies depending on the age of onset. How do we diagnose Parkinson's disease? As of now, there is no specific test that can be used to diagnose Parkinson. However, physicians can check a patient's medical history and review any signs or symptoms a patient might be experiencing to see if there, if there are any correlations with Parkinson's disease. A physician can also request neurological or physical examination a specialized imaging technique that has been used to help physicians diagnose for Parkinson is the DAT scan. At the bottom right here, uh, this is what a physician would see. On the left is what a normal, a normal brain image should look like. And on the right side, this is what a, a patient's brain might look like if they have Parkinson. This imaging technique basically allows doctors to, cap to capture detailed pictures of the dopamine system in your brain. It is the first FDA approved diagnostic imaging technique for assessment of movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease. This test alone cannot diagnose Parkinson's disease by itself, but it can help confirm a physician's clinical diagnosis. Signs and Symptoms of Parkinson's Disease These signs are the dominant symptoms that physicians use to help them determine what medications to start the patient on. A resting tremor is characterized as a pill rolling tremor. Bradykinesia is characterized by slow movements. For example, patients have trouble with simple things like buttoning up their shirts. They feel super tired and weak all the time. Gait disturbances are characterized by a shuffled walk. Physici physicians usually see rigidity particularly in the wrists and the elbows when trying to bend them. There's a reduction in arm swing. Other symptoms and mental symptoms can be due to not just Parkinson's. For example, Lewy body dementia includes either Parkinson's disease dementia or dementia from Lewy bodies. Both types have similar symptoms and brain changes. Additionally, many other symptoms about a patient's Parkinson's journey can be due to side effects of certain medications they are taking. One example is compulsive disorder, which is brought out when taking dopamine agonists. Lifestyle challenges. At first, when a patient is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, they may still be able to function normally in their everyday life. However, 
Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disease and thus symptoms begin to worsen over time. Certain jobs may be difficult to do with a tremor, with mental changes, or with bradykinesia. Many people have to quit their jobs or end up getting laid off because they can, cannot perform their duties anymore or their Parkinson's becomes a hazard to the work field. Being laid off or having to quit your job can lead to things like financial problems for many patients, especially those who are young, as Parkinson's doesn't just affect those older than 60. Certain medications for Parkinson's can become very expensive over time, and not being able to afford those medications can put someone at a disadvantage for getting treatment. Family problems can also arise as the disease progresses due to the fact that many patients may have to rely on their other family members to help them take care of them. This can cause strain on a family as sometimes the symptoms and side effects to medications can lead to patients having outbursts or mood swings when they don't really mean to. Living with Parkinson's disease is very manageable. However, it is a drastic change from the life many people were leading prior to the onset of symptoms. One major stressor is to exercise more because it can reduce the bradykinesia or slow movements that people experience. While there is currently no cure, there are several different ways you can go about treating Parkinson's disease and managing symptoms. This is based on the symptoms, age, and onset of the disease. Thus, it is important to identify the source of the greatest disability. In the next few slides, we will be covering those ways. Non-pharmacological treatments are always the first thing to try before turning to medication. Examples are counseling, physical therapy, surgery, like deep brain stimulation, and exercise. Exercise and physical therapy. Exercise is one of the most important non-pharmacological treatments that can drastically help those fighting Parkinson's disease. Bradykinesia, or slow movements, can really impact a person's life. This symptom can get much worse and lead to a loss of function quicker if patients do not start to exercise regularly. Exercising every day can help someone maintain their normal daily functions. There are many things patients can do to exercise, like walking, running, biking, certain exercise classes, etc. There are many Parkinson's disease exercise groups that people can join to start up on their own as well. One study done by the Parkinson's Foundation found that people with Parkinson's disease who engaged in at least two and a half hours of exercise a week had a better quality of life than those who didn't exercise at all or started later in their life. Thus, as you can see, exercise can really help maintain independence and functionality with Parkinson's. Surgery could be an option for patients with Parkinson's disease. We have deep brain stimulation surgery where they place electrical metal um, wires in the brain and these electrical wires then send electrical signals to the brain which help control some motor functions like tremor. It works as a switch so when it's turned on it can control um, motor functions so it can stop tremor and when it's turned off the tremor comes back. That's a, a really good treatment option. However, not all people are candidates, but it makes the, la the later stages of Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease easier to handle. People will most likely still have to be on other medications to control their symptoms, but there are rare cases where people get to fully stop their medications, which is really great. Counseling and support services. Joining a counseling group or a support service may be one of the best things that a Parkinson's patient can do. Communicating with others who know exactly what you're going through can help you on your journey in fighting Parkinson's, especially those who have just been diagnosed and are new to everything Parkinson's disease throws at you. The Michael J. Fox Foundation has a Parkinson's helpline that anyone can always call to get anything they need. It's important to know that you are not alone in this battle and can count on others to help you be the best version of yourself. About some pharmacological treatments. Levodopa has many advantages compared to some of the other drugs that we will cover. It is the most efficacious and all Parkinson's patients respond. It is better tolerated in elderly than most other drugs will be. 
The therapeutic window, or range of a drug that provides safe and effective therapy, begins to narrow after six to eight years of taking the drug. So it's not recommended that younger Parkinson's patients start on levodopa first. The way levodopa works is by converting to dopamine in the brain. Carbidopa helps levodopa by allowing more of it to be converted and used. While levodopa is a great Parkinson's drug, it does have some adverse effects just like any other medication. This can include dyskinesia or impairment of voluntary movement, confusion, hallucinations, dystonias, or involuntary muscle contractions. There are many different forms of carbidopa and levodopa, like an inhaler and a GI tube. However, for treatment of Parkinson's is COMT inhibitors. These are drugs that inhibit the enzyme catechol o methyltransferase which deals with dopamine in the brain. Some advantages to using COMT inhibitors are that it's easy to administer, it may reduce the risk of motor complication if used early enough, and it increases the on time or decreases the off time. On time is when the drug is working well and your symptoms are controlled. Off time is when the drug is no longer working well and symptoms such as tremor, rigidity, and slow movement reemerge. Some disadvantages to using COMT inhibitors are that it can worsen dyskinesia and discolor urine. Next is dopamine agonists. They are first-line treatment for younger patients with Parkinson's disease who have tremor as their dominant symptom. It lowers the risk of motor complications and it lowers the development rate of dyskinesia, which is an involuntary muscle movement. It also has more benefit with wearing off compared to levodopa and it works by mimicking the action of dopamine and binds to receptors that monitor, monitor motor function. Advantages of dopamine agonists are that they are available in many different formulations, so in addition to the oral, oral available ones like Primifexil and Rub and Roll, we have a patch formulation, Rotocodine, and we also have an injection available um, abomorphine. For disadvantages, it is not recommended for elderly patients, especially ones with cognitive dysfunction, which is a lot of older patients. And patients on dopamine agonist have to be aware that um, have to be aware of some major side effects like drug interactions, hallucination, compulsive behavior, like gambling, excessive spending, and hypersexuality. Anticholinergic drugs can also be used to treat Parkinson's disease. It blocks acetylcholine found in the brain, so it basically inhibits nerve impulses responsible for involuntary muscle movements and various body function. Atrobine and belladonna alkaloids are two examples of anticholinergic drugs. They can help with tremor and they can also reduce excessive saliva. However, they can also cause cognitive and musc muscarinic side effects. Selegiline so and resegiline are both MAOB inhibitors and they can also be used to treat Parkinson's disease. They both work by increasing the levels of certain natural substances in the brain such as dopamine, neurobinephrine, and serotonin. And they can also be used in combination with levodopa, carbidopa, generally in younger patients or in patients with more mild Parkinson's disease as monotherapy. These MAOB inhibitors allow for more dopamine to be available in the brain so it improves many motor symptoms and it basically delays disability. Lastly, some side effects can be constipation, mild nausea, hallucination, and confusion. I think that was everything we had for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening and please don't hesitate if you have any questions to email Jeanette. The, this is her email. These are all the websites that we use throughout the presentation. Please feel, feel free to open any of them. They were really helpful and they had a lot of good information about Parkinson's disease. Again, thank you so much for sticking with us and enjoy the rest of your day.